What is happening crew? Victor here from Scary Top 10 TV back with another reaction video. Everybody's got to start somewhere, right? Today I'm going to be reacting to my very own scary short videos from my other channel, Scary Top 10 TV Shorts. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be cringy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a bit scary. I've never reacted to my own video before. To my own short stories from TikTok. It's going to be scary, but it's going to be cringy for me. I can tell you that, man. It's going to be uncomfortable, but uh, you know what? We're going to do it nonetheless. you got to do it. you got to somehow find the courage to do it. So so yeah, let's get it. Let's get it started. We're gonna start with flying snakes. Who thought ground snakes were terrifying enough? I'm gonna tell you about the flying snakes of South and Southeast Asia. Stick around, guys. Do me a huge favor. Hit add. Oh Maybe yeah. Watch this video as many times as you can and share copy link as many times as you can so it goes viral. Gotta use those call to actions, man. Times as well. These flying reptiles are scientifically known as chrysopelia, okay. or you could just call them flying snake. They grow up to about four feet and are kind Man, that hand action, those hands, what's with the hands, bro? Come on, man. It's like I'm with the London Orchestra or something. It's like I'm conducting an orchestra. What are you doing, man? Start with the hands. Nivorous and diet. Although these guys can't gain altitude, they use the speed of free fall to glide. They use the contortions in their body alongside the speed of free fall to generate lift. The snakes do to sound terrifying though. Off, they will slither to the end of a high branch, dangle in a J shape, and propel themselves from the branch. Okay. Comment this emoji if you've rewatched and shared copy link multiple times. Let me know times. if you rewatched. People that share copy link the most amount of times. Thank you. The hand action, bro. What are you doing with the hands? What's with the hands, son? Right, what else have we got? Okay, Robert the doll. If you watch this video till the end, I'm so sorry. Oh, if gosh. What have I put at the end? Have I put something at the end? I hope not. Named Gene was given a doll by his parents. He affectionately named it Robert. Shortly after Robert the doll joined the family, the family started getting plagued by Ooh. weird, strange, and scary occurrences. Little Gene would be playing by himself with the doll when all of a sudden he'd start giggling. The hands, though, bro. The hands, the hands, the hands. Parents would hear a more deeper voice responding to him. Little Gene started having terrible, terrible nightmares. Toys were appearing all over the place, mutilated, and little Gene would say, Robert did it. The oh, parents man. eventually had enough is enough and they banished the doll to the attic. However, following dozens of reports from neighbors saying of seeing a small figure walking back and forth behind attic windows, the parents had enough. This doll sounds like no joke, took bro. The doll out of the house completely. Unfortunately, this is a true story and Robert is currently being held at Fort East Martello Museum. Go and visit him at your own risk, but make sure you don't take any pictures. Imagine though, that's crazy. A true story as well. It's the it's the kind of story that you don't want to be true, bro. It's like, no, 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 thank you. Annabelle, no, thank you. Robert the doll, no, thank you. I'm all right. I mean, Annabelle is terrifying enough, but Robert the doll as well. They could like make, I don't know. It's like, they could be like a family. Robert the doll, Annabelle, Chucky. Ugh, scariest thing though. Mm -mm. What else we got? What else we got? So basically, I'm just going through the most watched video on my Scary Top 10 TV Shorts channel. The link is in the description. Go and check that out. It's where I tell my short stories from my TikTok account. Basically, I'm kind of transferred that content over onto YouTube. Um, next one, we're going to jump into. Uh, let's have a look. Final 24 hours in death row. Yes, indeed. We are back with episode three, talking about what happens in the final 24 hours of a death row in uh -oh. this life. If you missed the first two episodes, do hit the username so you can catch yourself up yeah. with the show. So now the prison. So this is like a series that I did. It's a 10 episode series that I did. Because what I did when I started in TikTok back in 2020, 2020, August, July. Um, so... Yeah, so I did the, I, I was kind of doing these different series um, for different topics that I wanted to really explore into topics that I was kind of passionate about in terms of understanding them more, learning more. So I was kind of learning as I do the research and as I kind of give this information or exchange this information with my um, with my audience. So this was a 10 part series. There's a there's another five part series that I did on um five scary things that happened during the filming of the exorcist um there's a um five part series that i did on the most haunted places in london there's a ton ton of series bro that i did um there's a five five part series that i did on real life possessions and how they ended so there's just a ton of stuff that i um a ton of content that i uh 
that I uploaded on there, which I've subsequently transferred over to YouTube on that Scary Top 10 TV Shorts channel. I mean, if that sounds like your vibe, definitely do go and check it out. The link is in the description. Has arrived at the death house and they will be constantly watched around the clock. Okay. Until it is time for their execution. Guards are fully aware that this is the time that many death row inmates... At least I've tamed the hands though, the hands are tamed. The prisoner will get their own cell with their own toilet and shower. It is during this time that the inmate will try to have their last ever night's rest. Okay, so the crime aside, whatever crime they did to get to death row, um, which is probably going to be horrible, and which is probably going to leave some poor family out there with a huge hole, um, you know, emotionally, that they're never going to be able to feel. Um, imagine though from the perspective of the death row inmate it's your last night ever this is the last time that you ever sleep quote unquote sleep as in have a night's rest you're not going to be alive anymore in the next sort of 48 hours you're going to be gone done finished it's going to be over how do you feel just imagine it or if unable to rest can use the opportunity to contemplate and reflect on their lives. Join me on the next video as we'll look at what happens the morning after and beyond. Do also support me by hitting share, copy, It's just crazy, bro. Um, you can just imagine. Right, what else we got? Ghosts of London Houses of Parliament. Oh, I like this one. Let's have a look. Houses of Parliament. It said that if you stand very... So this is a comment reply, by the way, for those who follow me on TikTok, um, they'll know what this is. For those of you who don't use TikTok, it's basically, there's a feature where you can reply to comments by video. So for example, if you leave a comment in the description here on YouTube, I would then have an option to click on video reply and I'd reply to that comment directly. It's a great way to interact with your followers. Um, and it's a great way to show support as well because obviously by replying to that comment you're then highlighting that person's name You're putting them in the video as well And you know, it's, it's a really good way to kind of show support and show thanks to To your uh, to your followers really and the people who support you reply by doing a video um, by you know doing a doing a request that they've put in but this one was Basically scary stories to do with houses of parliament in England and this was my response on New Year's Eve, watch the Westminster Bridge clock strike midnight. You may be lucky enough to spot the spirit of Jack the Ripper. It's said that during this time of transition from old to new, England's most famous serial killer can be seen running across the bridge uh -oh. and hurling himself into the icy waters below. Some historians have come to the conclusion that during the year 1891, Jack the Ripper took his own life, and some have surmised that Westminster Bridge was his chosen spot. I'll be video replying to one person who comments the two emojis I've hidden somewhere in this video correctly Oof. in the next 24 hours. I like that one. I kind of I like that one. I think it's it must be because this is one of my more recent um, videos. This is 20, 2021. 2021 i think whereas you can kind of see the progression like the flying snakes one that's one of my older older videos um so you know there was st still a lot of work being done still a lot of um you know still kind of learning the ropes whereas i'm kind of gradually getting better i'm not perfect far from it but i'm gradually just building up and getting better as you can see with some of the videos um crazy historical facts about christmas park tree this is christmas 2020 let's check it out Crazy historical facts about Christmas part three. But you won't believe where exactly the modern version of a Christmas tree is theorized to have come from. When Prince Albert of Germany introduced for the first time ever- Yeah, I couldn't believe this. ...new wife, Queen Victoria of England at the time, the idea took off across the pond. This was the first ever known version of a modernized Christmas tree, if not the first ever Christmas tree. This Did you know this? this? I didn't know this before I researched this video. It's crazy. So essentially, the idea of a Christmas tree from the research that I've done online comes from uh, Prince, Prince Albert of Germany. This drawing appeared on the Illustrated London News in 1848. And from there, the idea of Christmas trees kind of went viral. Hit plus if this is not something you were aware of before. It's kind of crazy. I wouldn't, really wouldn't have thought that before. Um, so essentially the whole the idea of Christmas tree comes from a love story. Um, it's insane to think about it. By the way, the quality of my camera, um, I'm using to film, I'm using the front facing camera for the scary top 10 tv channel i'm using in that tiktok video i'm using a iphone 7 plus front facing camera selfie camera so the quality is not great and i'm guess this was winter in britain during this time so for starters the lighting outside wasn't great 
and in my videos I, I use a lot of the light um a lot of natural light i do have a ring light uh i've got it here actually i can show you see if you can see it there it is so i do have a ring light but it's not it's not that strong uh it is it is quite good but i have to get like really really close to it um but so i try and use a lot of natural light as possible as much as possible but in that video it was winter so i'm talking about christmas um and the natural light was horrible um yeah I thought that one was right. I mean, camera quality, definitely something I need to improve on. But, you know, you want to see yourself. I want to see myself as I'm filming. Um, and with a front-facing camera, I can. Whereas with a back camera, it's kind of tricky because I can't see what's going on. And the pictures and images that I'm referencing to behind me, I can't see what I'm looking at. Whereas with the front-facing, I can point where I need to point to on the picture that I'm talking about. Um, but, yeah, quite cool. I'm actually enjoying this a little bit. As sad as that sounds, I thought it was going to be too cringeworthy but i'm kind of kind of having fun right next one uh the real story behind the conjuring don't watch the bit at the end if you scare easily true story in 1971 another video reply moved into a 14 room farmhouse in parisville rhode island uh -oh. shortly after strange things started to happen random items around the house such as the brooms would go missing scraping sounds against the kitchen kettle when evidently no one was in the kitchen Piles of fresh dirt that would keep reappearing if the floor was freshly clean. The, the true story behind The Conjuring sounds terrifying. Um, and the fact that it's a true story, again, you know, you know, believe it if you will, don't believe it if you won't, but the fact that it's a true story, that does not help, bro. Over time, this escalated to spirits being seen around the house. Although largely, for the most part, they were harmless, there were some that were clearly displeased with the family's presence in the house. Long story short, the family did some research and it turned out there were eight generations of the same family that had lived in this particular house before with bizarre occurrences plaguing each generation. Uh -oh. Many members of this same family had died under mysterious and often horrifying circumstances, yep. especially the children. Yep. What you're about to see was inspired by the true events that this family endured. Wait for it, here it comes. I think... I mean, I've seen The Conjuring before, but, you know, it's one of those films that I have to get myself in the right state of mind to be able to watch because it's it gets real in that film, man. Both one and two. And I think they're working on part three at the moment, are they? Let me know in the comments, but I think they are. Um, and that's, that's going to be pretty interesting. I think part three from... I watched an interview um, or a trailer um, not long ago. I think it's to do with some guy uh, back in the 80s, 70s that did some murders and said the devil told him to do it. And um, they're kind of going into that story and delving deep into it. And that sounds like it's going to be freaking terrifying, like Amityville horror type terrifying. So looking forward to that one. Um, never watch this video at 3 a.m. This is why you shouldn't watch this video at 3 a.m. in the morning. During this one New Year's Eve, a chilling event took place at Cleveland's Agora Theatre. Uh -oh. Although it's had to reinvent itself many times over the decades, is that Ohio? the theatre was first built in 1913. Mm -hmm. And although many staff and performers have met their end at this theatre mm -hmm. over the last century, there's one particular entity that stands out. RIP my sleep decades, from that picture. There's been a multitude of sightings of the so-called man in a yellow rain cult. Not who you During a see. ghost hunt on this one New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. said ghost hunters were said to be disturbed by many entities in a Operations. weird strange smells coming out of nowhere that image in the background is from a japanese horror film like a found footage style horror film known as gonjiam now american films are scary right but everyone out there knows the granddaddy when it comes to countries that do horror films is japan and that film right there the scene where you see this lady's face and what she starts saying, that will stick with you for weeks. That is terrifying. It's basically this group of people that go into a mental asylum, as you do, ghost hunters, um, to try and, and make some kind of contact with the other realm, and they start filming. And, and, and basically, it gets real after that. It's freaking terrifying. Voices that seemed to come from beyond the grave. One particular ghost hunter was sure that she felt a splash of cold water hitting the back of her legs, but there was no physical evidence whatsoever. Could it be a ghost or something far, far worse? Let me know in the comments. Follow for more scary content and sub to my YouTube for longer videos. Whew. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. But yeah, when it comes to horror films, Japan, oh man. 
That's quite, it's quite a good one. Actually, I enjoyed that uh, last one. Never watch this video at 3 a.m. So, yeah, I don't know. So with some of my videos, especially some of my early ones, there was a lot of like promotion, a lot of trying to get people to follow, trying to get people to click this, basically using call to actions. But as I'm gradually kind of building up, um, I'm using call to actions less and less. I mean, the account on TikTok is kind of growing. I'm at 50K-ish followers at the moment, 56, 54, 56, I can't remember, but I'm somewhere around there. So as I'm kind of gradually growing, I'm not using call to actions as much. I know they can be quite annoying when you use them a lot. So I'm trying, I'm kind of trying to stray away from them um, as, as I'm moving forward. But obviously, you know, you got to do what you got to do, man. This is why you should always pay attention to your fellow passengers on a plane. Uh -oh. A flight attendant named Sheila Frederick noticed a terrified looking girl on a flight once. This girl was accompanied by an older looking man. Mm. Seemingly having come across similar situations in the past, Sheila discreetly asked the girl to go to the bathroom where she'd left a note asking the girl if she was okay. So you can see in this one, I'm not using the ring light, I'm using my hand, uh, which is why the camera's moving so much. Um, and I'm also using my earpods um, microphone which is pretty good by the way it's pretty the apple earpods microphone is pretty decent but the closer you get you get it on your um, you get it to your mouth it basically it it takes in everything even the unpleasant sounds that you don't want like the purrs and the tuz it, it kind of accentuates them and they sound a lot louder so i use it sometimes but not all the time and then if i put it, keep it away from my mouth like if i put it here on my chest if i'm moving around and it, you know it kind of catches that that sound as well that the fabric makes which is not very pleasant so it's an it's an art basically getting it right it's you it, it's you have to find the art to it uh, so which is why sometimes i'll just use my natural voice with the mic with the camera microphone rather than using the ear pods but yeah girl responded to the note by writing that she needed help urgently by the time the airplane landed airport police were waiting to pick up the older man who was crazy. a human trafficker taking this girl to god knows where so i have hidden an emoji somewhere in this video go to my most recent youtube video and comment what the emoji is sub follow me on tiktok let me know and i will follow you back one of the ways again if you are growing a tiktok account that's st storytelling like this um just one of the things you can do to try and keep people engaged really um like you know you can play games i've hidden something in this video um if you can find it you know comment it and whatever also it's a really, really good way to get people to watch the video up until the end because obviously tiktok really likes high watch time and the more watch time your video gets the more they'll promote it and that's challenging when it comes to storytelling videos because they're long long in the tiktok sense um as in you know you're anywhere from 40 to 60 seconds in the TikTok world, that's a lot of time. So you want to keep people engaged. You want to give them a reason to stick up until the end of the video. And one of the things to do is just, you know, insert a little game in there or put this in the video. Can you find it? If you can, let me know. And then people can watch all the way up until the end. Works sometimes, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, but definitely worth a try. Um, what else we got? What else we got? So that's a duet with Mr. Bolin, and this is, so I kind of want to stick to my own stories. One of the most haunted houses in London. Oh yeah, check this one out. Tell me with a straight face that the bit at the end of this video wouldn't stop you staying at this house. This property has been something at the end. dubbed as the most haunted house in London since the early 1900s. It's said to be haunted by a tortured soul, a spirit of a young lady who took her own life there. Now, You've got to, you've got to respect London when it comes to hauntings. I mean, it is one of the oldest places on the planet. There are far older um, cities on the planet, but you know, with how old London is, you get these really old structures and properties where generations and generations of families have lived, and you know, tragedies occurred and plagues and all sorts of things. And you can only, you can only imagine. Um, how scary some of these places get really like this story um lighting seems to be decent but it looks like it's evening again 
said that she did this after jumping from the rooftop, escaping from her evil uncle, who often subjected her to different sorts oh, of abuse. Bro. The entity has such a vengeful and dangerous nature that in a maid once went mad in the year 1879 okay. after spending just one night in this property and she died the next day, having been taken to an insane asylum. Not ideal. Amongst a plethora of other reports, it's also said that a sailor once tripped and fell to his death, having been fleeing in terror from an unknown force within these walls. The pictures in the background, by the way, I, I, I hear a lot of people commenting online uh, that, you know, this is not real. This is not that picture. This is not that video. Oh, this is a clip from a movie. Yes, it is. It's not. This is just to kind of give you an idea to, to kind of add to the tone and the feeling of the story. It's not that actual picture of what happened. Yes, the video clip is not the actual clip of what happened. It's just to kind of add to that. Um, and a lot of a lot of channels do that. A lot of people do that online. In fact, eighty percent of the storytelling channels you probably watch probably use a lot of stock footage, a lot of stock video. Um, Mr. Bolin uses that a lot in his channel as well, and on his thumbnails, he uses that on some of his TikTok, if not all of his TikTok storytelling videos. So that's just how the internet works. People use images, people use video, people use audio to kind of capture the feel of what they're trying to tell you, to capture the feel of what they're trying to explain to you. Um, it's not necessarily always going to be that particular story or that particular... It's not always going to be linked to that particular specific story. If it is, you'll get, you know, some kind of notification to say real photo or actual photo or something along those lines. If it's not, it's just to help support the story. It's just to kind of build a framework of understanding and yeah that's the reason why that's there it's not always going to be that specifically that photo or specifically that video many have speculated that those who dared spend the night at this property have met their doom having experienced something like this the conjuring like this for example this is from the conjuring that's not from that particular story it's just a clip from the film the conjuring uh, which is just again to add to the tone and the feel of the story but yeah, that's Conjuring 2, man. That's Do not watch that film alone. What else we got? This video got me to keep my lights on at night. Let's go. When I first saw it, the video I'm going to play at the end got me to keep my lights on for a little bit longer at night. Oof. So don't forget to follow for more content like this, sub to my YouTube for longer videos, and let me know in the comments what topics or areas I could cover next. Let's go. Over time, while doing research for these type of videos, two names in particular keep coming up over and over again when it comes to the most haunted houses in the UK. Borley Rectory in Essex is one of those names. Share this video with someone from Essex. Fun fact, I've actually done a video on Borley Rectory um, in Essex here on this channel on Scary Top 10 TV. Um, very short, fairly short video, um, but basically it just delves in a little bit more in terms of the background of Borley Rectory in Essex and some of the claims, some of the people that have witnessed some strange things on there and what's proven to be fake and sort of, like, and sort of stuff like that. So if you wanna check that out, um, in fact, I might link it at the top of this video on a card so it might be appearing on a card right now at the top or i might just link it in the description so go support your boy go and check it out property was built in 1863 on the site of an old monastery in which a nun was once executed for succumbing to her feelings falling in love with a monk mm -mm -mm. all the way throughout the centuries even after the monastery was taken down there have been persistent reports of a spectral nun haunting the property the footage I'm about to play next was partly inspired by this figure whose stories and sightings have persisted over the centuries. Nah, bro. That particular clip is from The Nun. If you've seen The Nun, then yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty terrifying film, um, but yeah, really enjoyed that story. Um, let's see what else we can find. Um, spiders. So again, another series that I did on the TikTok um, channel. Um, really enjoyed doing these uh, series at the beginning. Again, this was when lockdown was just starting in the United Kingdom. Well, not just starting, but it was it was smack bang in the middle of lockdown in 2020, around June, July, August time, um, where where I work 
full time, my nine to five. There wasn't really a lot, a lot of work um, due to the pandemic. And there was a lot of time basically that you had um, while I think the kids were still going to school. Um, while um, there was basically a lot of time. So I was utilizing the time and kind of growing my online presence. And by the way, if you are someone that wants to have some sort of online presence, I hope you took advantage of the lockdown situation, man, because when are you going to get an opportunity like that again in future for a lot of people? If you don't want to grow an online presence, that's fine. You know, ignore that. But if you are someone, I'd be very interested to understand what you've been wanting to do um, in terms of your online presence, whether that's been, you know, a creative, a musician, you know, cartoonist or you know, animator or painter or whatever, or makeup artist or whatever, or whether that's educational, um, whatever it is that you want to do online. I hope you manage to take advantage of that time because if you haven't, I mean, if I can do it, you know, I'm a father, I'm married, I've got two kids, I've got a five-year-old, I've got a seven-year-old. And, you know, if I can do it, you've got absolutely no excuse. You've got to get started and, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere man you've got to get started and you know the journey of a thousand steps begins with a single footstep and if you know if you no excuses you've you've got to have gotten it done yeah after this lockdown i don't want to hear anyone you know um that's got dreams anyone that's been wanting to establish some sort of online presence anyone that's been wanting to learn an instrument that has been given time off from work or school that I've not learned it. There's no excuse at all. Um, unless you're a doctor, unless you're a nurse, unless you're a train driver or people that have not stopped working during this lockdown situation. This has been an unprecedented opportunity for people to develop and for people to get their foot in and get started um, and kind of build little blocks in terms of the life that they really want to live. Um, starting from their online presence again really sad obviously you know we wouldn't have wanted this sort of time um if someone said you know if we had the option if someone said oh you can have all this time but you know millions of people are going to die do you want it obviously we would have said no but the way it worked out was that it did happen so i'm just you know have an opportunity mindset kind of off topic a little bit but it's just something that i wanted to to drop in this video but yeah animal species that could take over the world if they wished part five another series that i did in 2020 this time we're talking about spiders could take over the world if they wished part five with an estimated population of spiders, around 25 man. Spiders. million tons worth spiders are serious business <sighs> the amount of meat consumed by all spiders each year is more than what the entirety of all humans weigh and that's crazy um Spiders kind of scare me, but not to the extent that I freeze, if you see what I mean. I've, no, I've never really seen a spider that big or that bad that I'd completely freeze. The problem for me is when they start moving, when they're still, standing still, you know, fine, I can kind of look at it. But when they start moving and when they move fast, that's when I get uncomfortable really quickly. Um, but this video just kind of helps kind of understand the depth and the extent at which spiders would be able to take things over if people weren't here, if humans weren't here anymore. And it's just scary to think like ants, the numbers of spiders out there on the planet, as opposed to the number of human, the numbers of human beings. It's just insane when you think about it. In a nutshell, they could eat all humans within a matter of a hundred days or so. They exist in approximately a hundred percent of all American homes. If they decided to all work together as a team, we'd be gone in a matter of a few hundred days. And that's scary to think that they'd, uh, if they wanted to, if all, if all spiders attacked people at the same time around the world, every single person, it would literally take just a matter of a few hundred days and a few hundred days and they would have eaten everything. Um, and they'd probably still be hungry after that. <laughs> it's, it's insane they'd still be hungry please not the spiders share copy link to shock a friend with these facts hope you guys enjoyed that um i don't want to spend too much time um it was cringeworthy a little bit as it was my own videos but i'll be honest i kind of i enjoyed it more than i thought um but yeah if you want to see more stories like that i've got about 150 plus videos over on scary top 10 tv shorts 
all of them come from my TikTok channel, which will be linked in the description. So do go and support your boy over there. Do go and check those out. All stories are obviously short, so they're not longer than 60 seconds. The longest one that you'll get it will be 60 seconds long. So do go and check that out. If you've watched up until now, and if you support the channel, thank you very much. Do make sure that you subscribe. Do make sure that you hit all, turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Really appreciate your support. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys in a future video.